you install Fiddler, you open up the options menu under tools, you click on the HTTPS, you click on encrypt HTTPS traffic, you press OK like eight or nine times, you're basically signing your life away. It creates a self-signed certificate, uh, it installs it in your trusted root authority. It's basically going to um, take all the traffic from all the servers, act as a proxy, re-sign it to this certificate, and all the applications running on your machine uh, won't know any difference unless you're using SSL pinning, which I don't even go into. Uh, so this is easy mode. It just works 100% of the time. Uh, it's great if you have QA people who are technical but don't want to go through all this stuff with Wireshark or people who just want to uh, look what's going on in their, on their home computer. Maybe you've gone home for the, the holidays and your parents' computers are doing something really weird, so you open up Fiddler and it shows all these connections going out to these really scary sites, uh, but it'll also show you what the data is being sent as well. Um, that's how easy it is. It's just like one step in Fiddler. I love it. It's um, specifically for HTTPS or HTTP. Um, it is a web proxy. It's not Wireshark. Wireshark does all of these things, so uh, it can be convoluted to work with at times, whereas Fiddler is amazing. It has a powerful filter tab, just like Wireshark. Um, you can filter by hosts, you can filter by zones, you can filter by um, URLs containing certain things, certain session codes, um, ignoring content that's under a certain size. You can <coughs> just use the host filter. Um, remote connections. So on your phone, you can configure a proxy to go through Fiddler. And as long as those apps aren't using SSL pinning, you can find out what traffic uh, they're sending. Uh, and if they are using SSL pinning, you can usually go on any uh, Google website and just look up, how do I defeat SSL pinning on Android? And you find out you can just unpack the Android file and do a, a little shim and the SSL encryption is no longer a thing. And it's pretty cool. Um, there's a bunch of tutorials if you're interested in learning that. Then you can find out what your server or your client is actually sending back to the servers and you can modify. There's this one guy, he paid for something on an iPhone and when he went to the Android he didn't get that feature. So he took the traffic, decoded it, and then stored that value on his Android using his server. Um, so he didn't feel bad about it because he had already paid for it once. Um, but those are the kind of things you can do. Uh, and then it allows you to download the, um, the certificate from the Fiddler host, so you can install it on your phone. So now you have this trusted SSL certificate that's being signed for everything. Um, definitely won't go through that in this tutorial, but it's something you can do in your own time. Um, and it's really cool. But it's a rabbit hole. Once you start doing that, you just you don't want to stop. Um, so that's, that's how you allow other computers to connect to your instance of Fiddler. I use this for troubleshooting from somebody in Texas who was writing a script. Um, and it wasn't working and they had written it in Java and I wanted to know what the requests were doing so I started an instance up in central US on Azure, started Fiddler up and then I tell, told him to point his jar file to my proxy and then I could see all of the traffic going through and we could debug this together and I found out that just his HTTP protocol was being sent really weird with extra values um, and we ended up figuring that out it was really cool. So statistics, uh, this is the, the nitty gritty stuff that Fiddler can do where it can tell you. Um, this is Yahoo, and then there are 321 requests when I go to ca.yahoo.com. That's a ridiculous amount, but it only took seven seconds to load that page, which is pretty cool. Uh, there's a lot of TCP connection durations, which means uh, because there are so many requests for hosts, uh, every time you open up a request to a new host, depending on how far it is away, there's going to be a delay between opening up that TCP connection. Uh, the really cool part of this is there's uh, eight seconds of TCP and 16 or another eight seconds of HTTPS negotiations, but this page, because everything is threaded, still loading in seven seconds. Um, it's really neat to see that. Uh, it, under it allows me to understand that 2.1 megabytes of data was also sent during that uh, period, 56 unique hosts, uh, 291 HTTP 200s, only 19.302s have been there before, even though this is in incognito mode, which is kind of neat. A uh, bunch of 204s, and it breaks down the content types. 
So this is a JavaScript heavy site with like 1.4 megs of JavaScript, uh, 0.2 megs of HTML. This is compressed, which doesn't tell us that on this screen, but it's definitely gzip compressed. And uh, it's pretty cool. A lot of information all at once uh, when you are using this to, uh, like let's say you have one of those Nest devices or any kind of the IoT devices, and you somehow get access to change the software, or you are just going to send a proxy on it and it's going to blindly accept it, um, you can find out all the traffic it's going to. Uh, on your web servers, you can tell it to go to the proxy instead of just going straight to the source. So if you want to debug web service requests in like ASP.NET and the machine.config, you can tell it to go directly to Fiddler. So as long as Fiddler is rolling, it'll send any internal server requests, any API requests to Fiddler as well. Uh, you can steal traffic and credentials that way. It's pretty great. Uh, same thing for Linux. You can just tell it to use a uh, any of the, the majority of the servers um, to have it, the web traffic go through a proxy. The uh, inspector. This is where I spend most of my time because I want to know what is in a request. Uh, so this is an example of request headers for. Um, it's probably going to be. Add. Yeah, it looks like an ad request. Um, just a bunch of useless garbage here because they keep everything as small. CMP is a variable name. Uh, APF, that probably means something really good to somebody. Um, it's just a lot of junk, but it's, it's presented in a way that you can see patterns. Um, this is the, the response header from the server. Uh, you can see it has an e tag, it has uh, frame options has transport information. There's no server name here, which is pretty cool. Sometimes they slip that in there, uh, and you don't even know. <coughs> this is the uh, request view. So this is the, maybe the request that I'm sending the server. It's a bunch of JSON values, kind of unreadable in that value or that format. This is the response from uh, the Yahoo web server. It's in a JSON value, so it's just a bunch of text here. It's text view. You can format the results um, using syntax view. So the stuff I'm sending to the, the client can make it more human readable. So I could change these values, like position threshold 200. What happens if I set that to like 31768 or something? Um, what happens if I make lower bound 200 instead of 2? Uh, you can modify that right in there by uh, just hitting unlock. Uh, this is a, a web forms view. So whenever you're submitting uh, data through either a form on the website or the query string, you can see these values here. Um, and in unlock mode, you can actually just modify these on the fly and then resend it to the, the server if you wanted to. Um, so browser version CH, uh, that's probably short for Chrome. What happens if you put the a megabyte of data and then send it back to the server. Do they get angry? Do they accept it? Um, that's how you can do that easily. Uh, this is the post request in the raw mode. So this is actually what I sent to the server. Um, you can see I'm not leaking any information here really. It's my cookie, it's my JSON request at the bottom. Um, going to Yahoo, this is my user agent. Uh, this is the formatted JSON version, so it's a little more pretty. The autoresponder. This is, uh, I don't use this part anymore, but when I do, it's to uh, immediately return value from a web page. So if I'm opening up something like yahoo.com and it's slow, is it slow because of the initial load or is it slow because of the resources? What you can do is you can drag the session on the left to the autoresponder and now it'll respond from memory. So when your browser calls that page, It'll serve up the, the home page of Yahoo immediately, but any subsequent resources, it'll still go out and fetch them. So if Yahoo took uh, 600 milliseconds to respond, you're going to cut 600 milliseconds off for the, uh, the connection. It's pretty cool. It's great when you're troubleshooting stuff in other countries. So if you have a server in China that you're accessing and it's slow, um, you want to know if it's because of the connection between the server or the connection to all of the subsequent resources. You can completely negate that by just having it load locally. Uh, it's good for debugging. 
and it's also good for sending data back to the browser that you want to change. So if you edit the response, um, it'll open up in your editor of choice and you can change the response body. So if you've written your web framework to go to the back end and say, hey, do I have permissions for the admin menu? And it says no, it returns false. You can have an auto responder return true. So even though you don't have access, it'll send back yes. And now your client the library may go, okay, I'm gonna show the admin menu. And then you click on it and it goes to the admin page. And of course the server's just like, no, you really don't have access. <laughs> um, but you're allowed, you, you're able to figure out what your client library does at that point. Um, a lot of uh, phone apps, a lot of mobile apps um, will allow you to do stuff like this. If they don't check the permissions on the server side as well, you can find a lot of vulnerabilities that way. Sometimes people just, uh, if they don't have it in the framework, they don't do it, which is kind of fun. Uh, the Composer is my favorite thing in the world as well. I just love Fiddler. Um, they the the best front ever. They're so nice. And Telerik and Progress. You drag your session from the left onto the Composer, uh, and it allows you to inline change any of these values. So if you wanted to get rid of your cookie, you can change your cookie to somebody else's. Um, you could change the, the accept um, so that it's not uh, gzip, so it doesn't send something compressed back. Uh, you can send garbage there and just wonder what your server does. And all you do is request that little execute button at the uh, top right here, and it'll save a, a version of it here and send it out to the server, and then show you the response. Uh, Scratchpad is just a of HTTP requests in one. If you're doing um, multiple sessions, it's useful. I never use it. I think they just added it because they're bored. <laughs> <laughs> These are different options. If you're in Windows world, you can automatically authenticate with the NTLM. Uh, it won't work all the time, depending on if you're on a local machine or not. Um, fixed content length just means you can change things, uh, and it will automatically change the content length, so if you add or subtract letters, it just does the math for you. It's pretty nice. Um, the timeline view. It's pretty handy. It shows you um, what resources take the longest to go, where your bottlenecks are, um, if there's anything too big on the page. And it's uh, it's kind of handy, but if you don't have any control over your third party libraries you're going out to, then it's not useful information. Uh, reissuing requests, really useful. All you do is you right click on a request, you go to replay, and you reissue a request. Uh, if you do this, you could do it sequentially or do it all at once. So if you um, do reissue requests, you hold the shift key, um, you can put a thousand there, and it's going to send a thousand requests to that machine right away. Uh, you can take down websites pretty easily, you can overload your local devices pretty easily. It uh, allows you to find out uh, just what something is made of. Um, if you want to be nice, you can do reissue requests sequentially. So this will actually reissue requests one after each other. So it'll make the request, make the response, make the request. You can do this a thousand times, and uh, if those requests take like a second, then you know you have a thousand seconds of timing. Uh, if there's a, a blip in the network or anything like that, it'll show up. If everything averages out to always be one second, that's great. If sometimes it goes up to six seconds for no reason, well then you have a time that you can specifically correlate to why at 1.56 p.m. this took six seconds instead of the average one seconds. So it's, a, uh, it's kind of like a canary you can use. The text wizard is really good because, as you can see, that cookie is kind of encoded. So with the text wizard, um, it's under tools, you can convert um, any kind of uh, common values, base 64, or URL encodes, hex encodes, to a JS string, from a JS string. Uh, MD5 too, obviously, if there was a from, that'd be amazing. And then you can deflate SAML um, to and from to see uh, what a SAML response is, um, different versions of SHA. Uh, this allows you to turn that gobbledygook, which is a, uh, that's a YML version. Um, so the, sorry, YQL, Yahoo query language. Uh, they use this. It's really weird because you can put any type of query in there and then send it to there. And then it's like, how does that make any sense? Um, so that's what they do, and that's 
how I found that one out. Um, this returns no data right now, so I don't know what it's supposed to return, but I'm really curious. So you could actually just replay this over and over again with different values, uh, changing the statements, putting it in your own um, YQL editor, and figure out uh, what it can return. Honorable mentions for Fiddler. Uh, remove any encodings. This basically tells gzip to stop working. Are uh, really handy for troubleshooting uh, network speeds. If somebody says, hey, there's a problem with something, I think it's the network, just turn off gzip. Like that Yahoo page is seven megabytes when gzip is disabled. Um, and it loads in five seconds still. That's amazing. So you're able to basically tell um, the servers to do something uh, reminiscent of 1996. You can simulate modem speeds, which is also really neat. It uh, allows you to find out how your application will function under uh, bad circumstances. Uh, you can modify the speeds of which it sends data in the Fiddler script editor. Um, the Fiddler script is basically an ability to do uh, JavaScript coding um, on, on before requests, on after requests. It's really handy. I haven't had to touch it in the last year, which means uh, my life's pretty good right now. Um, but if I do use it, it's because I want to <coughs> apply gzip encoding to something specific or remove the header on something specific. I think that is it. Any questions on Fiddler? Does anybody use Fiddler? <coughs> Those are good hands. If you're on Windows, it's fantastic. If you're on Mac or Linux, uh, it is mono compatible. It's a lot better than what it was a couple months ago. There's also the Fiddler Capture Lite. I think they call it Capture Solo or something. But it just runs on a client machine without an install. And it sets the proxy. You have them install it or you install you have them run it. You do whatever they're doing on their computer. It captures the traffic, sends the SAZ file over to you. You analyze that and uh, it's pretty good. There's other tools you can use that are less hand-holdy than Fiddler, like there's Man in the Middle Proxy, there's Edercap, there's all these other tools that are out there, but I've never had somebody tell me no for installing Fiddler because it's just a cute little green icon or you see the violin or whatever, the Fiddler. Um, the other ones are pretty scary, and they're pretty scary websites. Um, That's everyone's worst nightmare. Well, wasn't mine, that's the important part. I call this week. <laughs> Any other questions? So this is more QA oriented as opposed to penetration type thing? You know, I have done some pretty nasty things with that. So Hopefully you can do it. Here's the story. Um, yes. Um, so in 2005, I was working for a hotel company and the reservation system we used I kind of got really curious about it, so I opened up Fiddler. It was like a very early port of it, and what I was able to do was remove a JavaScript column page that was alert, you're not logged in, and then it was location.hrf back one. So I removed that from the page, and then when I went to log into the admin interface with a bad password, it still let me in. Uh, so I showed that to the reservation guys, it was some guy in Niagara, and uh, he's like, oh, um, I got a job through that. <laughs> and then about a half a year later, we were doing a presentation um, where one of the hotels, we were competing with another reservation system. They're like, hey, um, uh, we get these things where rates come in, and we've changed the rate. People are booking at that rate. And I'm like, well, so you open up Fiddler, you modify uh, the HTML so it returns the particular rate you want, and then transparently you get them to book that hotel for a dollar, and it's their like prime minister suite, and you just automatically win like a contract right there. So it, it is such a uh, deceitful little tool that you can do some pretty fun stuff with, um, but it's not gonna do uh, any of the work for you. You have to know that if you modify these values or if you return, um, if you keep up this part of the max min request, that you can change uh, Canadian Tire to show 10,000 results instead of 100. So now you can flush their catalog into disk and stuff like that. It really is the, it's getting, it's a proof of concept. Once you've fiddled around with Fiddler, then you can put something you know, to use using a, a more advanced program to scrape or um, automate some kind of penetration. Yeah, I love it. 
How about mobile uh, sites? Yes and no. Um, so depending on your operating system, uh, you can set your proxy to go to Fiddler as a man in the middle. You can install the certificate, but if you're on your phone, uh, depending on what app you're using, it might have SSL pinning, which means it has that certificate it knows and trusts, and unless the server responds with that certificate, it's not going to accept the traffic. Um, so through Chrome, yeah, you can see traffic if you're on your mobile phone, going to the uh, website through Chrome, um, and through, I think, Firefox as well. Anything else? Anybody have any tools they use and love for uh, this kind of nefarious thing? Work speed. Work speed. <laughs> <laughs> so, same, same concept, a little more hacking into these tools. Yeah. That was my biggest problem with having like Snort installed on my laptop. So when it's a corporate device, especially when I was put the MTO for nine years, you had anything like that on your machine, you were just questioned constantly. Uh, so Fiddler, it just it snuck in under the radar. Wireshark, I had it on our Active Directory machine because there was some weird kind of packet problems and uh, this really big double standard they have going on. You couldn't install it, they could. Yeah. Is the VM? Yeah. Running through there and just... This was, oh man. <laughs> so this is like the government back in the day where we built uh, in Guelph, this is the Guelph Data Center. We built this giant thing in 2013. It costs a, a bunch of millions of dollars and now we're using Azure there. So it's <laughs> just... Sorry? No, it's uh, it's for the Ontario government. Oh, okay, yeah. yeah, it's the Guelph Data Center. Uh, there's there's it was supposed to be originally two, uh, one on this side of the street, and for disaster reasons, one on the other side of the street. <laughs> <laughs> exactly right. <laughs> like, yeah. On a floodplain. Uh, beautiful center, but yeah, getting VMs was near impossible. Okay, I think we'll, we'll wrap up here. Yeah.